Good morning, everybody. My name is Trenton Munn. I'm a pastor at Christ is King Reformed Baptist Church in Myrtle Springs, Texas. Me and some of the brethren from our congregation have uh, come out to love God and to love neighbor today, to come out and to, to spread his word, his truth. Um, his word declares that we can know that we're being loving when we're obeying God's commandments. Right, so we want to define love by how it, it comes to us from outside of our, our opinion and how we feel. We, we want to think of love in the way that our Creator thinks of love, the way that, that love truly is. And our Lord reveals in His Word, our Creator reveals that to love is to actually obey His commands. And one of His commands is to go out and to proclaim His gospel, to proclaim His truth, uh, the, the good news. That's what gospel means, the good news, the good news of Jesus Christ. Friends, that you can be reconciled to your Creator today through Christ and Christ alone. There's nothing that you can do to obtain this. We, we have a holy God, a holy creator who has uh, created us for his good and righteous and holy purposes. And you, and you and I have fallen short of that. And because he is the just judge of the heaven and earth, uh, the just judge who will do right, he will punish all lawbreakers, including you and I. He will punish all who has broken his law, all who have uh, in different ways worshipped false gods, stolen, lied, dishonored parents, committed adultery, murdered. Jesus said... Jesus said, you know, the commandment says you shall not commit adultery, but if you've looked after another with lustful intent, you have committed adultery with that person in your heart. And so though you may not have physically committed adultery, friend, if you've ever lusted after someone, uh, looked at improper images on your phone or computer screen, you, you have broken the commandment of committing adultery. You have committed immorality in your mind. Friends, I would remind you that, that God judges not just for what we physically do, but for even how we think. He, he will judge our thoughts in accordance with Christ Jesus and his righteousness on that day when the Lord Jesus returns. We, we will be judged in accordance with his law, and you and I have drastically fallen short. And the only way that you and I can be reconciled to God is not by what we can do, because the only thing that we have done is obtain judgment. The wages of our sin, what we have earned because of our sin, is death and the judgment of God, the eternal judgment of God for sinning against his, his eternal being his eternal law. And so the only way we can be reconciled to him again is not through ourselves. It's not from what we can do. It's not how good we are. Because the Bible is very clear, no one is good. No, not one. No one is righteous. They have no fear of God before their eyes. We, we all naturally want to follow the passions of our own body and our own mind. We want to follow a way that seems right to us, naturally, instead of the way that our Lord and Creator has created us to follow. The, the, the way, the truth, and the life. We've fallen short of that and, and pridefully, and pridefully seeking our own ways. And the only way we can be reconciled to our God is through Christ and Christ alone. Christ Jesus, God the Son. Our Creator is, a, is, a, is triune, God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit. And God the Son entered into his own creation, lived a perfect life in word, thought, and deed for 33 somewhat years that you and I can't live for 33 milliseconds. He lived that perfect life in word, thought, and deed, and that took him to the cross where he voluntarily laid his life down for the sins of his people. Uh, for our sake, the scripture declares, for our sake, he became sin who knew no sin, so that in him we would become the righteousness of God. He was treated as a sinner and a lawbreaker, though he was not, so that we would be treated as righteous, though we are not, though we have been sinners, though we have been lawbreakers. That, that is the good news, friends. That is the glorious news. We can be made right with our God. We can be made right with our Creator today through His wisdom and through His steadfast love. Through His wisdom and through His steadfast love that He has given and shown in Christ Jesus to His people. We can be reconciled, you and I. The, the call is not uh, do better. The call is not uh, be good enough to be reconciled to God. The call, if this is true biblical Christianity, that, that's what sets true, uh, true biblical Christianity over against every false religion in the world. Every false religion in the world is works-based in some way. 
They say that you can be good enough to be made right with God. You can do these certain things, follow these certain steps, and you can obtain this yourself. That is false. That is a lie. The Bible declares that we're saved by grace through faith, and this is not our own doing. It is the gift of God. It's not of works, lest any man should boast. Friends, at the end of the day, it's not good people that go to heaven and bad people that go to hell. It's bad people that go to hell and bad forgiven people who've been clothed in the righteousness of Christ that go to heaven. They're not going to be in the presence of God, anyone who enters into the consummate kingdom of God in heaven. is not going to be boasting in what they did to get there. They're not going to be boasting in themselves. Look at how good I was. Look at how strong I was. Look at how wonderful I was to get myself to heaven, to get myself reconciled to God. No person in, in the consummate kingdom of God in heaven is going to ever boast in themselves. They're going to be forever boasting in Christ Jesus. They're going to be forever boasting in He who sufficiently accomplished their salvation in and of Himself. He who lived the life, the righteous life they could never live. He who died the death that we all deserve because of our sin and gloriously rose from the dead on the third day, ever living to save all who draw near to Him, uh, draw, all who draw near to God through Him to the uttermost. Ever living to save sufficient to save Christ Jesus, sufficient to save, sufficient to bring you to God. 1 Peter 3.18 says that Christ Jesus laid down his life once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, the perfect, eternal, righteous one, clothed in flesh, the only righteous man to ever live in word, thought, and deed. He laid his life down once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous that we would be brought to God. You can be sufficiently brought to your Creator, reconciled to your Creator, to know Him in true life and true joy through Christ and Christ alone. Apart from that, there is not true joy. Apart from that, there is not true life. You, you, you uh, apart from Christ, apart from finding your all in your Creator, you will never truly joy creation as your Creator has intended you to because you're, you will continual, continually in your life seek to find your all and find your contentment and satisfaction in creation alone. And friends, creation will not do that. These things around us will not do that. People will fail you. Things will fail you. Money will fail you. You will fail you. And you know you've proven that to yourself several times in your life. We've all proven that to ourselves. You will fail yourself. You will not meet up to the expectations that you know you need to live up to. That power, that strength, only comes from our God and Creator. It only comes from Christ. That's why the Apostle Paul can say in Philippians 4.13, in the context of saying, I can abound, I can be brought low, I, I can do anything, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, with pure joy in Him. Why? Because that's who Christ, Christ is pure joy. He's pure righteousness, pure life. He is the bread of life. Whoever comes to Him will not hunger. Whoever believes in Him will never thirst. Whoever comes to Him as, as the light of the world, He will not walk in darkness, but He will have the light of life. That, that is the message, and Christ Jesus changes your heart. It's not as you see from many today who profess to be Christian, yet do not seek to follow his commands. Because a true Christian wants to follow the commands of Christ. They want to follow what he says in his word. Jesus says in John 14, 15, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Do you profess to love Christ, but you don't seek to keep His commandments? you see the contradiction there? That's many in our day. That was me for 27 years uh, of my life before I was truly converted. I, I would say I was a Christian. I went to church. I prayed a prayer one time. I walked an aisle, got baptized. Hey, I even got the little uh, Gideon Bible on my desk at home. Uh, where on the back it has the date of whenever I prayed the prayer. Yeah, but I, I wasn't converted. Why? Because my heart wasn't changed. Not only does Christ reconcile us to God, but friends, in doing so, in doing so, he changes our heart. And being reconciled to God, we now have a new heart that wants to live the way that our God would have us live and hates the sin that we used to love. If we love Christ truly and we have been converted, we will keep his commandments. 1 John 2, 4 says, whoever, I know, whoever says, I know him, truly knows God. Whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. Friends, the Bible talks about those who would make false professions. Jesus talked about this in the parable of the sower. There was a man who went and sowed seed. Some of the seed fell on the wayside. The birds ate it up. Some of the seed fell on the, uh, the rocky places, and, you know, it sprouted up and produced some fruit. But through times of 
uh, storms and, and rain. It, it, it beat on the plant, and because it had no root, because it was just founded in the rocky places, it fell away. Then there was some seed that fell on the thorny places, and it was choked out. It didn't get to produce fruit, but then some seed fell in the good soil, and the good soil produced fruit, some 30, some 60, some 100-fold. And the Lord Jesus says that that's a, a parable about how it is when the Word of God goes forth. See, that, that's exactly what's going on in the heart of every single person right now as I speak forth the gospel and the Word of God. That's what Jesus says in the parable of the sower. Some of you are just going to throw it to the side, like the seed that fell on the wayside and didn't make it in the soil. Some of you are going to throw God's truth away out of your pride and your love of your own opinion. You're going to throw it away because you could care less about things of truth and you're actively against it. Some of you are going to receive it with joy and you're going to be encouraged by it, but friends, you're going to go through times of testing. This is the seed that fell in the rocky place. There were storms, there was rain that fell on it, and it, and it beat against it, and it, and it fell. You're going to go through times of testing and trial, some of us, and we're going to turn away from Christ. Because, hey, this isn't fun anymore. You're not giving me the life that I want. You're not being the butler that I wanted you to be to just serve me with every little joy I think I needed in my life. You're not giving me everything I want, God, and, and that's because you never found your true joy in him. You thought that he was just good. And that's the, the wickedness of the prosperity gospel that gets proclaimed today. Where many proclaim that, that God's will for your life is just, uh, you know, health and prosperity and wealth and so forth. That is ridiculous. God's plan for, our life, for, for his people's life is to make them holy. To conform us into the image of Christ. That we would find our joy and contentment in him. That we could be just as, as I mentioned earlier from Paul. And says that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We can be as Job who, after losing his family, says the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That is what the Lord our God's plan for us is, that we would be holy, a holy people, a people whose hearts are changed, a new creations in Christ who hate sin and hate the things of old and long to live in the truth. That is, that is what we need. If, 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 if America is truly going to be made great, if this is going to be a place of righteousness, the Bible declares that sin is a reproach on any people. It is righteousness that exalts a nation. If America is going to truly be great, we need to bow the knee to King Jesus. And we need to obey his righteous law. Because apart from that, everyone is pridefully following their own opinions, their own inconsistent opinions. That have no basis in the truth whatsoever. And that's, that's you know, a lot of, of what you have celebrated in this month where much of the country is celebrating Pride Month this month. But you know, our God, if we truly love our God, we, we will be against that. If we truly love our God, we, we will reject a month that wants to be celebrated for Pride because our, our God, our, our Creator, specifically brings out in His Word that He hates Pride. He hates pride. Isaiah 66, verse 1 to 2. Thus says the Lord, heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. What is the house that you would build for me? And what is the place of my rest? All these things my hand has made, and so all these things came to be, declares the Lord. What he's saying is, is he said, look, I've made all this. I, I made all of creation. All of this is mine. What is the house that you're going to give me? Uh, all these things my hand has made, and so all these things came to be. What are you going to give me that's not already mine? He owns the cattle on a thousand hill. He owns all things. He's perfect. He doesn't need us. He was perfect in and of, in and of himself in loving eternal relationship between God the Father, Son, and Spirit. He, he doesn't need us. He creates us for his glory that we would delight in him properly in his glory in Christ. And so, and so but, but after that, he says, but this is the one to whom I will look. This is the one to whom I'll look with favor. This is what the Lord God declares. He who is humble, right, not prideful. He who is humble and contrite in spirit and trembles at my word. The Lord, our God, our creator, who has revealed himself in the Bible, has revealed himself in the Son, in Christ Jesus, and he's revealed himself to you in conscience. That's what Romans 1 declares. You, you know that he exists, whether you, you say you believe or not. 
this, this God, our creator, the only true and living God, says that this is who I look upon with favor. He who is humble and contrite, that means to be broken, contrite, broken in spirit and trembles at my word. This is who he looks at favorably. If you want to be reconciled to your God today, you, you need to humble yourself, not be prideful. Uh, God hates the proud, but he loves the humble. He loves the, those who are broken in spirit, broken over their sin, knowing that in and of themselves they have nothing. Not, not seeking to boost their self-esteem, but boosting their Christ esteem, boosting their God esteem. That, that's what we need. The reason we sin is because we pridefully think too much of ourselves and we want to follow a way that seems right to us. And we want to treat people the way we want to treat them instead of the way they need to be treated. That's where sin comes from, from pride, not humility. You know, you hear much of that today. People will pridefully, they'll bring out this, this prideful way of living. Well, I just had to do what was best for me. I just had to do what made me happy. Friends, you haven't been created to do just what's best for you and what makes you happy. You've been created to love God and love neighbor. You haven't been created just to seek your own interests selfishly. That is pride, and that is, that is the problem with mankind. That is the problem with this nation. People are just seeking a way that seems right to them in pride. They're not being humble before the Word of God. They're not being broken in spirit. They're being haughty in spirit. They're being arrogant. They're rising up against the knowledge of the truth of just the reality we live in. Because, I mean, certainly, Pride Month is not just pride in general. Certainly, I mean, Pride Month is celebrating what? The, the perversion of how God has created us in his image, in male and female. That, that's what it's celebrating. Hey, let's, per, let's, let's, let's decide that God was wrong. Let, let's pridefully raise up against the knowledge of God and decide that God is wrong. And, you know... Jesus is wrong in Matthew 19 when he says that God created the male and female from the beginning and that marriage is between male and female. They leave father and mother. They cling together. They hold fast together. Let's just pridefully forget that. And, and let's, let's pervert the truth and let's, let's make up a lie that men can marry men and women can marry women. And, so, and, and actually, you know what? That's just subjective in and of itself because now a man can be a woman and a woman can be a man. It's a perversion of God's truth. It is pride, and God hates it. It is pride, and God hates it. He, he looks favorably upon the one who is humble and contrite in spirit, who trembles at his word, not who is haughty over his word, not who seeks to, to scoff at his word. And so you know what? Forget what God said. Forget what God said. I'm just going to do what I want to do. That's not who God looks at favorably. The one who humbles himself is broken over his sin, and by his grace he clings to Christ. He clings to Christ Jesus, knowing that in Christ he has all that he'll ever need. Knowing that in Christ he has found a sufficient Savior, a sufficient mediator for him between God and man, the God-man Christ Jesus, who lived the perfect life, not in pride, but in complete humility as the Christ, as the God-man, under the will of the Father. He submitted himself to live out the righteous life for our sake, for the sake of his people, that we would be reconciled to our God sufficiently forever. Nothing for the true child of God in, in humility. It's nothing in my hands do I bring. Simply to the cross of Christ do I cling. I cling to him and him alone. Not Christ plus words. Not Christ plus my baptism. Not Christ plus I walked an aisle one time and I prayed a prayer. No. Christ and Christ alone. That is what the true child of God says. He who is humble, broken in spirit, trembling at his word. He, his only hope is Christ alone. It rests on, on nothing but the blood of Jesus and his righteousness, his, his perfect death, his perfect life. They don't walk in pride. The world says pride is a good thing. As I mentioned earlier, we, we have this whole uh, month now to celebrate what God hates in pride. The one who has created us, the one who declares truth to us, who tells us why we are created, tells us what our purpose is in creation. He tells us something totally different about pride. He hates it. It's an abomination to him. Proverbs 16, verse 5, his word declares that pride is an abomination to him. It's an abomination. The prideful are an abomination to the Lord. Proverbs 16, verse 5, they will not go unpunished. They will not go unpunished. The Lord who does right and will not let justice escape him will punish all those who are prideful. 
And France pride is simply raising up your opinion and your knowledge above what is actually true in the knowledge of God. The Bible declares that there's a way that seems right to a man, and the, and the end of that way is death. And that way, those many ways that seem right to us, that is the way of pride. It, it can be seen in people seeking to exalt themselves over others, but it can also be seen in, in people secluding themselves from others and not actively loving others the way that they ought to, not actively giving the love to others that they've been called to by their God, what's right by God and what's right by neighbor. Apart from Christ, we walk in pride. Proverbs 11, verse 2 says, Pride is followed by disgrace. Proverbs 29, verse 23 says, Pride will bring a person low. Pride will bring a person low. Uh, Mark 7, verse 21 to 23, Jesus said that pride is something evil that comes from a person's heart and it defiles a person. He doesn't say that it's a good thing. He doesn't say that it's something to be celebrated. He says it's actually something that comes from our wicked hearts and shows that our hearts need to be cleansed. That, that we need to be cleansed from sin. And friends, that only comes through Christ. 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He died on the cross so that his people would be cleansed from the sin that they love, from the sin that you know is wrong. But in your suppression of the truth, if you reject Christ Jesus today, in your suppression of the truth, you continue to live in and you scoff at righteousness. Not because you know that it's, uh, you know that it's wrong, but because you hate it. Because you hate it in your heart. You suppress the truth by your unrighteousness. That is exactly what God reveals in Romans 1. Because you have a prideful heart. Friends, I pray that if you are rejecting Christ today, you are rejecting righteousness, you are seeking to foolishly live in accordance with your own vain opinions and the opinions of man instead of the objective truth of our God. Friends, I pray that you, you humble yourself by the grace of God. Quit walking in pride. Jesus said that pride is something evil that comes from a person's heart. Mark 7, verse 21 to 23. It defiles a person. Pride shows that your heart is evil before God because a prideful heart is arrogant towards its creator. It wants to live the way that it wants to live instead of the way that our God has created us to live. It says, forget about truth. I'm just going to create my own world. That's what many do today who celebrate Pride Month. They're just creating their own world. They're creating their own uh, way of thinking. And it's a way of destruction, it's a way of destruction towards neighbor as well. Which is why this country is in the state that it is in today. So many people seeking to follow a way that seems right to them and the pride of their face and wickedness instead of just purely seeking to love neighbor and, and loving one another in the truth. As our God has called us to, as, as really the founding fathers of our nation would have us to, in, in serving our triune God. Proverbs 21 verse 24 says that scoffer is the name of the arrogant, haughty man who acts with arrogant pride. Pride is evil. It's arrogance toward God. It, it raises itself up against God and his knowledge. And that is why God is opposed to prideful people. The Bible says very clear. The Bible says very clear in James chapter 4, verse 6, that God is opposed to the proud. Right? The, the proud makes themselves enemies of God. God bless sir. God is opposed to the proud, it says, but he gives grace to the humble. Again, who does he look towards with favor? Those who are humble, Isaiah 66, verse 1 and 2. Those who are humble, those who are contrite and broken in spirit, and those who tremble at his word. He is opposed to the proud, James chapter 4, verse 6. God is opposed to the proud. He gives grace to the humble. Those who humble themselves underneath his truth, submit themselves to follow his truth, not just their own opinions. And, and their own imaginations about how life should be lived, just in a way that seems right to them. Proverbs 16, verse 18 says that pride goes before destruction. Pride goes before destruction. To reject God goes before destruction. Certainly eternal destruction uh, in, in hell. Yes, the, the Bible does speak of hell. God does punish as a just judge. He does punish those uh, who break his law and are not reconciled to him. Pride leads to eternal destruction under the wrath of God. For, for those who will not turn from their sin, who will not turn from their pride and humble themselves before him to be reconciled purely in Christ Jesus, God out of his great love, God out of his great love has sent the Son. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son that whoever believes in him will not perish but will have everlasting life. 
friends, you can turn from your pride today and have eternal life. You can be reconciled to your God in Christ. You don't have to continue to walk in pride, seeking to walk and in, in, in live your life out in foolish ways, uh, not truly seeking to love your Creator, not truly seeking to love neighbor, but just wanting to live uh, in, out of love for yourself, which is a prideful way of living however you look at it. Because you're seeking to say to your Creator, I don't need you. I can, I can do this on my own. And friends, you can't. You're gonna, if you don't... If you don't find that out now, by the grace of God, you will find that out later in his judgment. And I pray by his grace you find that out now. Because pride only leads to destruction. Think about your life and trusting in yourself. How many times it's led to destruction in your life? How many relationships are destroyed today because of pride? People just loving themselves and using others. How, how flippant do we use the word love today? Pride, God bless you, ma'am. How flippant do we use the word love today? A, a man, a young man will meet a, a young woman and, you know, she's very pretty. Uh, she, the conversation is good and so forth and so forth. And he thinks he, he loves her. But, but you realize if, it's, if all it is is just coming from that, she looks this way, she, she makes me feel this way in our conversation. You, you realize that's just selfishness? That's just pride? That's just that guy saying, she does this for me. And so I love her because she does this for me. That's pride. Because what happens, and this is what happens in so many relationships today. What happens then? What happens when she doesn't look the same way 30 years later? What happens when the conversation ain't going as well? Right? And you're in an argument or something like that. What, what, is, what do people say today? Well, it, it, you're just not, it's just not working out. It's just not working out like it used to. Why? Because you've been seeking this whole relationship in the pride of your face. In the pride of your face. Seeking to use that other person for your selfish desires. And when you're not getting them, you want to be God of your life and say, you know what, now you're out of my life. I'll find someone else who will meet my desires. That's why so many relationships break down today. You're not truly seeking to just devote yourself to that person in truth. You're seeking to use that person for what you can get out of them. And when you don't get it, well, you try to be God of your life and they feel your wrath and they're gone. I'll find someone else. Pride is a deadly thing, friends. We shouldn't celebrate pride. Let me tell you something. We will never, America will never be great if we have a month that celebrates what God hates. America will never be great. I don't care who you vote for. America will never be great if we, if we have a month that celebrates what God hates. God hates pride. He does not look upon the prideful with favor. He does not look upon people who are okay with pride with favor. I don't care if you profess to be a Christian or not. You're deceiving yourself. And you need to repent. If, if that's the way you're thinking in your mind, you need to repent and turn to Christ that times of refreshing may come from the Lord because times of refreshing can come, but it's only going to come in Christ. It's only going to come in Christ Jesus. You're not going to figure this out. Biden's not going to figure this out. Donald Trump is not going to figure this out. For those really hardcore conservatives that think Trump is the Messiah, Trump is not going to figure this out. It's only King Jesus. It's only the King, the Son, Psalm 2, whom the Father has given all the nations and all rulers, all kings are called to submit to the Son. Kiss the Son unless you perish in the way, for his wrath is quickly kindled. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. Friends, may you be blessed this day and take refuge in the Son. May you be blessed this day and take refuge in Christ Jesus. And not in the pride of your face, reject him. For his wrath is quickly kindled. And it is upon those who reject him. It is upon those who walk in the pride of their face. And think that man is going to figure this thing out. And, and, and we're going to get this thing turned around on ourselves. No. It's only through Christ. If America's going to be great, we need to submit and bow to the Son. We need to submit to King Jesus, the one who has all authority in heaven and earth. It is his truth that reigns. It is his truth that is the only truth that comports with the reality that we live in today, though many in unbelief reject it and suppress it by the truth of, by the, uh, the wickedness of their heart, by their unrighteousness. Friends, we call you to come to Christ today. Your only hope, my only hope, is to trust in Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, who humbled himself. The Word of God declares in Philippians 2 that he did not think it equality with God a thing to be grasped. God bless. 
but he humbled himself by taking the form of a servant. You see, he didn't come down here just to do, hey, Jesus didn't come down here just to, just to live in this reality that many people live in today. Uh, hey, man, I, I just got to do what's best for me, bro. I had to just do what, what makes me happy. No, he came down and submitted himself to be a servant, to actually love others, and to give himself for others. To love God and to love his people. He didn't come here to walk in the pride of his face. He humbled himself to be a servant, born in the likeness of men, truly God, truly man. He went to the cross and died the death that you and I deserve for our sin against God. God is a holy God. We've broken his law. We've sinned. The wages of our sin is death. The Lord Jesus died on the cross, taking the punishment that you and I deserve. The Bible declares that it pleased the, the Father to crush him. It, it, it was a pleasing sacrifice. God the Son, the God-man, taking upon himself the sin of his people, dying as a wretched man, though he was not, for wretched people who through him would be treated as righteous men, though they're not. He died a death that he did not deserve to pay for the sins of those who did deserve that death. He humbled himself. Therefore, in going to the cross, therefore, the Apostle Paul says in Philippians 2, that God has highly exalted him with the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee would bow and every tongue would confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of, Father, of the Father. And friends, we call upon you by the grace of God to bow the knee to King Jesus today. Kiss the Son. Do not walk in the pride of your faith. Humble yourself. Be contrite in spirit. Tremble at his truth and his word. And hear the good news that you can be reconciled to your creator today. Do not walk in the pride of your faith thinking that you can figure this thing out. You can't. And if you were to be honest with yourself, you know you've proven that to yourself over and over again. How many times in your life have you let yourself down? He will never let you down. He is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He is the God-man, the righteous one the only mediator between God and man, humble yourself and come to Christ. You find all that you will ever need in Christ Jesus. He is sufficient to save. He says, come to me, all who are weary and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Friends, you know you can't be good enough, and that's every false religion in this world. It says you've got to be good enough. You can't. Come, all who are weary and heavy laden, tired of trying to be good, good enough, and you know you can't. Come. And he says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I'm gentle and lowly in heart. Friends, you find a, a, a beloved friend in Christ Jesus, the blessed Savior, Lord God Almighty, the all-powerful one who will conquer your sinful heart. He will conquer your sinful heart. Sinners, come to Christ. He's all you need.